I'm a living thing, and you're a living thing, and this plant is a living thing. Living things are made up of organ. Organs are made up of tissues, and tissues are made up of specialized cells. This is where life begins. Cells are alive. But living things are made up of non-living stuff. The same stuff makes up things like dirt and plastic and stars. This stuff is called the atom. First we will learn the three subatomic particles that make up atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Then we will learn the difference between atomic number, mass number, and atomic weight. We'll learn what isotopes are, and then we're going to learn how to represent the electrons of an atom using a Bohr diagram. And then we'll learn what valence electrons are and how to show the valence electrons of an atom using an electron dot structure. The atom is the smallest unit of matter. There are a lot of different kinds of atom, and each square on the periodic table represents a different one. We call them elements. An atom is composed of three subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are located in the dense center of the atom called the nucleus, and the electrons are buzzing around the outside of the nucleus. The protons have a positive charge, and protons give mass to to the atom. Neutrons have no charge, but they also give mass to the atom. Protons and neutrons have about the same mass. It's about 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. That number is so tiny that scientists created a new unit to measure the mass of protons and neutrons called the atomic mass unit, or AMU for short. One atomic mass unit is about 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So instead of remembering that tiny little mass, we can just remember that one proton has a mass of 1 AMU, and a neutron has a mass of 1 AMU as well. Electrons have a negative charge, and are so tiny compared to protons and neutrons that their mass is 0 AMU. Electrons do not contribute to the mass of an atom. The number of protons is what makes each atom unique, and on the periodic table, the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is given by the atomic number. We can use the atomic number to identify the element. An atom with an atomic number of 4 would be beryllium. The atomic the atomic number is usually located above the symbol of the element. There's another number on the periodic table. This is called the atomic mass, or atomic weight. It is the average mass of all the different types of that particular element. For example, an element that has 9 protons and 10 neutrons would have a mass of 19 AMU. We just added up the number of protons and neutrons to get its mass. We also know what element this atom is because we know the number of protons. We can look up the atomic number of 9 and find that the element is fluorine. There are different Different kinds of fluorine. There is fluorine with a mass of 18 AMU, and there's fluorine with a mass of 19 AMU. How can these atoms both be fluorine but have different masses? Well, for an atom to be fluorine, the atom must have 9 protons, because the atomic number of fluorine is 9. But the number of neutrons can vary. The number of protons plus the number of neutrons will determine the mass of the atom. We call this the mass number. Fluorine with a mass number of 19 has 10 neutrons. Take the mass number and subtract the atomic number to determine the number of neutrons. Fluorine with a mass number of 18 has 9 neutrons. That is 18 minus 9 equals 9 neutrons. Atoms that have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons are called isotopes. So fluorine 19 and fluorine 18 are isotopes. Back to the electrons. Traditionally the electrons are shown orbiting the nucleus in rings. This isn't exactly how the electrons move around the nucleus. In reality electrons move around the nucleus in funny shaped electron clouds. The electrons have a high probability of being somewhere inside of these clouds, but we don't know exactly where they are. We're going to use a really simple model, though, that allows us to organize the electrons by the amount of energy that the electrons have. We call these rings energy levels. The model is called the Bohr model, or the Bohr diagram, named after the chemist Niles Bohr. Each energy level has a maximum amount of electrons to fill the ring. The first ring can hold two electrons, and then each ring after that can hold eight electrons. We'll draw the Bohr diagram for chlorine. Chlorine has 17 electrons. I know this because the atomic number of chlorine is 17. That means chlorine has 17 protons, and it will also have 17 electrons. In a neutral atom, the electrons have to equal the number of protons. So I'll represent the nucleus by a circle in the center. Now I'll put on the first ring. The first ring can hold two electrons, and so I'll represent those by two little dots. 
Now that that ring is full, I'll draw another ring. This ring can hold eight electrons, and I'll represent those by eight little dots. So far, I've put 10 electrons around the nucleus. Remember, chlorine has 17 electrons, so there are seven more. Since this ring is full, I will add another, and I'll put seven little dots into this ring to represent the last seven electrons. If I count up the little dots, there should be 17 electrons. Now, not all of chlorine's electrons are important. Only the ones in the outermost ring are going to be important in a chemical reaction. The outermost electrons are called valence electrons. There is a simple trick to determine the number of valence electrons for an element. The number of valence electrons will be equal to the group or column number on the periodic table. So everything in the first column has one valence electron. Everything in the second column has two valence electrons. We're going to skip over this middle section. Those are called the transition metals and they don't really follow this trick. So the third column is really this one over here, the one that starts with boron. Everything in this column will have three valence electrons and we continue the trend. Generally we don't really need to draw complete board diagrams, instead we can just draw Lewis structures, which are also known as electron dot structures. Electron dot structures only show the valence electrons. So let's draw the electron dot structure for chlorine. Chlorine is in group 7, so it has 7 valence electrons. We can also see this in the Bohr diagram. To draw an electron dot structure, we first write the symbol for the element which is Cl for chlorine. Then we place little dots around the symbol to represent the electrons. Generally, we want to keep our electron dot structure symmetrical. So if we picture the symbol inside a little box, each side of the box can contain two electrons. Electrons want to be paired up, and we'll talk about that in a later video. And so the electron dot structure for chlorine will have seven little dots representing the seven valence electrons around the symbol. So, did you learn everything in this video? Well, if you did, you learned that atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The atomic number identifies the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. The mass number is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. Isotopes are atoms with different number of neutrons, but the same number of protons. Electrons move about the nucleus in different energy levels, and valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level. 